Hi, I'm Dave Couch with Stud Rolling Products. Today we're going to show you how to set up your Lynx 4 modular stud welding system. When you open up your big old carrying case, you're going to see you got the Lynx 4 welder, its AC cord, your accessory kit, your ground cables with clamps, and your gun and cable assembly. So when we're setting up the Lynx 4 modular, which is my favorite for sign applications, by the way, uh, what I like to do is I slide this out to the edge of the bench. That way I can get full access when I'm inserting the cables here. Okay, so first thing you're going to notice are our cables. I like to start with the grounds. Is there's a tang on each of the ends of the cables. And there's a corresponding slot. I'll go ahead and insert like so. And turn clockwise until they cinch tight. It's very important that you do this only by hand. Don't use any tools. Just hand tight. And our gun also has that thing and slot. This is our weld power cable. And this is our control lead. Again, it also has a little tang and a corresponding slot. And that's our control lead. That's the trigger. Let the weld know it's time to go. All right. Tighten up that little threaded collar and we're good to go. And now that we've got the front cables hooked up, we're going to go ahead and put in the AC cord. Now we're going to set up the gun. So today's stud is going to be a 1024 by 1 flanged aluminum stud. So what you'll notice when you took all that stuff out of your box there was a little accessory kit. And in it, it's got tools for setting up the gun. 17 millimeter wrench, Allen key, and we've also got four collets. Today we're going to select the number 10. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to insert this stud into the collet. There's an adjustment I need to make. You'll see I've got this adjustable backstop here. All right, I'm going to go ahead and adjust what we call our stick out. And I want that stud a little farther into that collet. I'm just going to go ahead and and I'm hitting the backstop right now. I'm going to go ahead and give myself a little more room in there. And what I want to avoid is I don't want to bottom the stud out onto the collet. Uh, that'll cause premature collet wear and erosion. I want about one to two millimeters of stick out. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that my backstop is firmly against the stud itself. And then just cinch that little nut down there. And now I'm going to go ahead Loosen up the set screws here on the legs. I'm going to remove the foot piece of the leg assembly so it's out of my way. Insert this into the gun. Take my 17 millimeter wrench. And I'm going to snug that, but I, I don't want to tighten it over too much. I just want to snug it down. Leg piece. Now here's going to be the most important adjustment that you can make to this gun. And that's going to be how much of this stud sticks out past this foot piece right here. Alright, so what I want to do is I want just the flange itself to be sticking out past that foot piece. So, right there. Okay. And now I'm going to go ahead and tighten down. That screws. Okay, got run down. Now I'm going to give a little cinch on each one. Not much, just a little cinch. Okay. Take a look. You can see that the flange of the stud is just above this part of the foot. The next thing we want to do is adjust our spring preload. Now you notice that right now, as it comes from the factory, it's typically going to be right in the center, all right? And that is an excellent place for it to be if we're shooting mild steel or stainless steel studs. But when we're shooting aluminum, we need more spring pressure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the preload 
on our weld spring. And I do that by using a flat tip screwdriver, turning it clockwise. And I want to run that thing out to max, all the way to the plus side. I've got my spring pressure set. I've got my stick out set. And now I'm ready to weld. All right, now that we've got our cables installed, our gun set up, the welder's plugged in, go ahead and turn it on. So today we're gonna to be shooting a number 10 stud. The way to determine our weld voltage is we have our chart right here. You'll see on our chart, first column is, or I should say first row is diameter, either 12 gauge, 10 gauge, number eight, 10, quarter, five sixteenths. Now keep in mind, that is stud diameter, not sheet metal thickness. Some people will get confused when they see 12 gauge or 10 gauge and they think, oh, sheet metal, 10 gauge sheet metal. No, no, no. What it is, is that's the diameter of the pin, a 10 or a 12 gauge diameter pin. So again, it's always diameter, not thickness. So we're gonna go over and we're shooting number 10 stud today. So here's the number 10 column there. And now we're gonna select our material steel, which is for stainless or mild steels. We also have aluminum. Since we're shooting aluminum stud, we're going to go to the aluminum column. Call that over here, 115 and number 10, so 115 volts. And you can see the machine is set to 115 volts. I've got this little dial right here. I can increase my voltage by turning it clockwise. Decrease my voltage by turning it counterclockwise. there and just keep in mind that when you're doing this don't worry about chasing that thing to get it exact if you're plus or minus five volts you're going to be right in there i've got some aluminum sheet that i pre-clean i just use some mineral spirits and a white paper towel make sure i got off any oil residue i'm going to go ahead and attach my clamps I'm going, to pull the, I'm going to hold this down. I'm going to apply force with my right hand directly down in a downward motion on the back of the gun. And I'm just going to use this hand not to push down with, but just to operate the trigger. I'm going to pull and there we have it. And that's our first weld. And as you can see here, we have our ground spread apart. That is intentional. This is to help eliminate arc flow. We do not want to have our grounds together like that. We lose half the advantage of having two ground clamps. So by spreading them apart, it helps distribute the electrical flow, eliminating arc flow. And uh, you'll see there are some more lights on there, the ones on the right side as you're facing it there. Uh, these are lights that are really there for troubleshooting. Uh, in the day-to-day -day course of welding, you're not going to be looking at those lights. Uh, but if you have some issues or some, you know, hey, what's going on here? Those can actually help you. So if you take a look at the, you'll see right there, gun on work. And right here, gun on work. All right. And when I shoot a stud, and I remove it, you'll see weld complete. Let me go ahead and shoot a few more studs here. I highly recommend our non-destructive weld tester. This is what we call our torque tester. And you set it to a predetermined value for depending on the material and the size stud. Let me go ahead and we're applying pressure at the base of the weld. Again, that predetermined setting.
and you can see it is fast and easy. All right, and that wraps up our setup video for the Lynx 4 Modular Stud Welder. Remember, if you have any issues, uh, don't fight it. Call us. Stud welding is supposed to be fast, easy, and consistent. And if it's not, give us a call. 800-252-1919.